Cool Contraption Guy with Tom Fox, workshop editor for Boys Quest and Fun for Kids magazines, presents... Welcome to episode four of my series, Electricity, Mysterious Yet Useful. In episode three, of this series, we showed how to make this solar powered flashlight which has no batteries. I bet you are wondering where the energy comes from to light the LED. Well here is a solar panel which changes light energy into electrical energy. You probably are wondering where the energy comes from when it's dark. This project is designed so that the electrical energy generated by the solar panel is stored in capacitors. The, these are one ferret capacitors, which are huge for capacitors, since capacitors are normally rated in microfarads, and one microfarad is one millionth of a farad. A ferret capacitor can store a million times as much energy per volt as a microfarad capacitor. Special capacitors such as these are usually referred to as supercapacitors. These particular supercapacitors shown here were originally developed for memory backup in some computer systems and in electronic clocks. Now we will demonstrate how this operates. Uh, right now, here's the popsicle stick switch was in which was described how to build in episode one of the series and we close it and here's the LED there's no light coming from it this means these capacitors are discharged now we take a moment to put uh, intense light on this solar panel just for a few seconds and now we will see if there's any charge we charge these capacitors in those few seconds. That's one of the advantages of capacitors over rechargeable batteries. They can be charged very quickly. Capacitors come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and types. The designer of electronic circuits must be, have knowledge of the exact type and size to use for a particular application. Here's a capacitor used in automotive ignition systems that use mechanical points, mostly which are mostly in older cars. Mechanics call this capacitor a condenser, which was the original name for a capacitor. Typically, this capacitor has the capacitance of 22 hundredths of a microfarad. However, it is designed so that it can be used in high voltage applications such as a car's ignition system. This is a motor starting capacitor and as its name implies is used to help start some types of large AC motors such as those used in refrigerators. This large capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor since one plate is composed of a conducting liquid called an electrolyte. Even though this capacitor is large in size, it is not a supercapacitor. This one here is marked 6800 microfarads, which means its capacitance is just under 7 thousandths of a farad. Another way of saying the same thing is that you would need nearly 150 of these capacitors placed in parallel to hold as much charge per volt as the super capacitor that we showed in the solar powered flashlight. Now I'll show how we can charge up this electrolytic capacitor with a 6 volt battery. We first take a reading of this uncharged capacitor and see the voltage. It should be 0 volts. Let's check it. It is. Now then we charge it up like this with this battery. This is a 6 volt battery. We should reach a 6 volt charge. Let's see if we get it.
Good. Notice how fast it was able to charge it up. This is another advantage that capacitors have over rechargeable batteries. The recharging time is measured in seconds and not hours as is rechargeable batteries measured in. These are small capacitors in size and rating and of different shapes. They are used in all sorts of electronic circuits. Now here is a paper capacitor. It's a rather old type of capacitor. The reason it is called a paper capacitor is that the insulation between the two very thin metal foils inside the capacitors is extremely thin paper. In the next video clip you will see for yourself how a simple capacitor really is. In this video clip we will show how to make a simple although non-practical capacitor using wax paper and aluminum foil. Next we show how to make a homemade paper capacitor. First thing we need to do is to put a piece of aluminum foil down and we want to tape it down to the work surface so it doesn't move. Then we need to make a connection to it. We will do that with a taping wire directly to the aluminum foil. Then we need to add wax paper, common wax paper. This will be our capacitor's dielectric, which is just a, a thin insulating layer. And we want to tape that down as well. Finally, we need another balloon foil. I want to tape this down as well. So keep things in place. And then we want to tape the other, another wire to the aluminum foil. We've got to make sure there's a good connection here. By pressing down hard. And that's our capacitor. Now we want to see how we did. We're going to use this Heath Digital LC bridge. Here we're going to measure capacitance and we got it set to show the billionth of ferrets setting which is uh, basically nanoferrets and so we insert our leads into the into the unit here and we got right now we got 16 15 hundredths of a billionth of ferret. Now we will see what happens when we put a book down to press it down. It shoots up to over two billions. We take it off, it's less. What we're doing was getting these two plates, which are the aluminum foil, closer together when we do this. And the closer we get together, look at that, the higher the capacitance and the more energy can be stored. Actually what we're storing is electric charge. Now one, he'll show one other little interesting thing. What happens when we rem lift up the goes close to zero. Now okay now that you learned that a capacitor is basically made of two plates that conduct electricity which are often metallic in nature, that are separated from each other by a thin insulation such as this paper. You probably are wondering how such a simple device can store electrical energy. Well, in the next YouTube video, which is episode 5 of the series, Electricity, Mysterious Yet Useful, the how and why of a capacitor are gone into in a down-to-earth way. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check on my other YouTube channels at Cool Contraption Guy and Magic Land Farms. Thank you.